What's going on everybody? I'm back with the BMW. There's a lot has been done since the last time posted a video about this vehicle. So I want to show you what's going on with it. Yes, I did take it to the track. Yes, I figured out the throttle issue. Yes, we upgraded the big brake kit. And I'm going to show you all of that in today's video. It is because of my instructor. I am here doing a video for you. I'm going to have to show you the cooling system, things that we had to do to make it work with this engine, the S54 inside the E30, the modifications we did, the some of the changes we had to do with the cooling system, the, the changes we had to do with the expansion and overflow tank. And because I'm in school, yes, I am back in school. That is why I have an instructor. I'm studying automotive service technician. Currently I'm in level two. I just finished off the level one. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to provide quality content to you. None of this YouTube facts. This is going to be legit facts. I'm going to double check. I'm going to try my best to pass on my knowledge to you. So there's a couple of things I learned in school. We're going to talk about that. Some flaws with my design in regards to the fan and the radiator shroud or lack thereof. Um, and some of the reasoning why I had to do that in the first place. So without further ado, let's get right to it. One of the most important aspects to the cooling system is, of course, the radiator. So this is a cross flow design. So what that means is the coolant goes from this left side all the way to this right side as well as from top to down. So it actually kind of moves, if you want to think about it, essentially diagonally, but uh, it does go across the rows, do not have sufficient cooling on its own. So that's why there are these fins. So these fins help turbulate the air that flows through the radiator because one of the best ways to cool something is time. So having more rows, a thicker radiator, is going to help with cooling because the air is spending more time absorbing that heat. This is the cooling fan relay. This is just a relay kit that I bought from Spall. This yellow wire is connected to battery positive. This is a fused wire. It is 12 volts that is supplying the relay. This red wire is the supply for the fan. Once the relay is triggered, power from the yellow wire will go to the red wire and activate the fan. This small orange wire is connected to ignition. This lets the relay know when to turn on and be on standby. The gray wire is the sending unit wire. So essentially once this wire detects ground, the relay will trigger, thus allowing power to go from the yellow wire to the red wire. What I've done is I've added an inline negative temperature coefficient resistor. So what essentially that does is as the coolant temperature heats up, the resistance of this decreases to complete the circuit for the signal. Once the signal is complete, the relay allows the load to the fan um, to be turned on and for it to operate. So once the coolant temperature becomes lower, the resistance is going to increase to a point where it's going to shut off that circuit and to stop the fan from going. The thermostat is located underneath this housing. To access the thermostat, you have to remove these three bolts. Purpose of the thermostat is three things. It is used to control the minimum operating temperature of the engine. It restricts coolant flow from entering the radiator, thus allowing the engine block to heat up the coolant as quickly as possible. Once the thermostat reaches opening temperature, the thermostat is used as a valve to control the amount of coolant flow entering the radiator, thus controlling the overall temperature of the cooling system. The water pump is a belt-driven water pump. It is actually located right behind this pulley here. The purpose of the water pump is to circulate the coolant. This has been modified. Originally, there was a fan clutch attached to the S54. However, because that we put it inside the E30, even though the E30 did have a straight six in it before, it was longer than the original. And there is not much room for that big chunky fan clutch to fit in between this gap. So I had to cut it off, smooth off the end, and add an electric fan to the front. So this is where the radiator fan is. 
as I learned in class today, is I should have a fan shroud. So the fan shroud is plastic that surrounds the fan to help divert the air from being rectangular to circular to help the fan work more efficiently. The resistor that we were talking about earlier, the fan relay, once that turns on, this fan starts to spin to cool the radiator down. This is the oil cooler. This is a, not the factory oil cooler. It is an oil cooler that I bought off eBay. It is okay issues or leaks uh, with it. I do wish it was, however, bigger. So maybe down the road, uh, we're going to upgrade this one and maybe even get a little fan on it uh, just to help with the cooling of the oil. So this is an overflow pipe that goes to my expansion tank because coolant will increase in volume as it heats up and that extra volume needs to go somewhere. So where that goes, that goes inside this expansion tank. You notice that there's a radiator cap on the top. Oh, that is interesting. Let's just put the cap back on like we never saw anything happen. There's going to be a period of time where the expansion tank is going to have too much coolant. Where that's going to go, that's going to go into the overflow. So the overflow actually has no pressure to it. This little hole is just a little vent hole. And this is where I actually check my coolant level. So you can open this when the car is hot, when it's cold. We're going to take a peek inside. Looking all right. It's definitely looking a little low, but uh, let's just proceed. Normally, this is where you would find the heater core. However, it has been deleted on this vehicle. So what I've done on the engine block is, is went ahead and bought a U-shaped silicone hose and just had it reroute back into the bypass hose. And let's check that out. Inside this crack, there's going to be that U-shaped silicone hoses that allows the engine to bypass the lack of heater core. So the two pipes that are going is one of them is going to be from the cylinder head and the other one's going to be the bypass. So let's check that out in the front. The main purpose of the bypass hose is to allow the hot coolant from the cylinder head to mix in and come in contact with the thermostat. This allows the mixing of the coolant in a more gradual way because once the thermostat does open, you'll have more of a blended coolant compared to having be as much thermal shock to your system if it weren't blended. Right in this corner here, that is the coolant temperature sensor. So that sensor is connected to the pipe that goes to that U-shaped silicone hose. It's a hard line that goes all the way to the back and that is the bypass hose. Points that will leak, that have the highest chance of leaking are parts like this that BMW likes to use. So what it is, it's a plastic fitting that attaches onto a hose and essentially the O-ring um, shrinks in these and causes leaks. So there's multitude of these uh, where the heater core connects is gonna have two of these, which I had to cut off the original hose and put that silicone U-shaped hose on. I got to take a moment to thank our sponsors, YouTube, thank you very much, Crypto.com, To The Moon, and of course, Garage 88. For those that don't remember, this is a four-pot fixed caliper from an RX-7, the FD, and I made a bracket. This is where the original E30 front caliper mounts to, and it's a larger, so I need to make a, a stainless steel bracket to allow it to, to fit. So that is the modification you need to do. I do have some racing pads on here. They look pretty good after only one track day on these. Unfortunately, I did have to add a spacer. It wasn't clearing the spokes of the rim. The rotor is from a Volkswagen Corrado. This is the largest 4x100 rotor you can buy. We did need to put this on a lathe and machine out about like a millimeter or something around just to fit over the, the bore. Bed liner for the floor. You don't need carpets when you're on the track. Uh, this is a PMC shifter that I got on eBay. It's a solid shifter which means it pivots on the transmission tunnel. It feels super solid. Like this is one of the most nicest shifters I've known and I'm not being biased. This is it. 
I figured out the issue with the throttle. So if you take a look at some of my previous videos, I had an issue with the throttle. You know, I pressed the throttle and it was not working. And I don't know why. And now I know why. And the issue is pin drag. Inside one of these connectors from the eBay harness that I bought, the issue was the female socket was too large for the pin. So the pin would be loose inside the socket, not giving the ECU a proper reading. It would go into this limp mode per se and give that pop poor throttle response. So I redid a lot of female pins that went into the ECU and it fixed the issue. 100% throttle, super responsive, no issues. I also added a tachometer. This engine does rev to 8,000, so it's really nice. You know, once I reach the maximum, I'm there. So it's just perfect. It's actually kind of hard to find one that actually goes to eight. Still get to keep the, the original OBD2 port. What I would like is to have a check engine light. So I need to add a light or who knows, maybe run an aftermarket a dash to accommodate that. This is the sport button right here. These are for the windows to up and down. All right, so that's it for today's video. Hope you learned something about the cooling system in regards to the S54, how it works with the E30, some of the things I had to overcome to make it work. And then I'm glad to really show you about an update with the car, kind of stuff that I've been up to. If you're doing a build like this, I really want to know what you're up to. If there's any questions you may have, just throw them down in the comment below. Maybe I'm able to help you. I hope I am, as we do have a running one here. Because I know these are fairly particular, especially with the subframe and the oil pan. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.